So, today, we're going to have the chance to be space rocket designers, or rocket ship designers. So here, we've got an example of a rocket, a very small one of that, um, and we're just going to wait till it's about noon. So we're pointing basically directly at the sun. The idea is that we're going to throttle up our ship, and we're going to try and get as far away from this planet as possible. So, the universe is quite big. Our, our objective is really to get in as, far, as far away as possible into orbit, and really, we'll see how close we can get to the sun. So, we've got a little way to go. It'll be interesting to see how well we do. Um, but, going back to our little ship, we're going to have a limited number of parts to work with, um, and we're going to need to budget for them accordingly. So, this little ship here, um, it's got a little motor, little fuel tank and then our cockpit of course it's powered itself up but now it's run out of fuel and we're only about 5,000 meters above uh, the Earth's surface so the highest point there we go 5,487 uh, was what we found that is the maximum height that this rocket has achieved and now it's going to plummet back down to Earth ever so carefully uh, on this particular model I've fitted a parachute so we should be able to save ourselves if we deploy it um, and we should have hopefully a safe landing back to the ground. Now um, you're going to have to work with a limited budget um, and the details of all the parts will be on the, the list that you've got but the general idea, uh, well the objective as I said is to get as far away from Earth as possible uh, given the resources. Oh, well perfect, successful landing. I do can still come out and a little green spaceman is happy with his life. So, um, the complexity of your designs can vary greatly. There's a fairly simple example. Uh, if I show you another one here, here's a slightly different one we've got. We've got bigger pieces, bigger engine, the biggest engine we've got available. If we go out to the launch pad and try and set it off, again, we should be able to see how well this one does and if it's any better compared to the last one. So straight away this appears to be um, traveling much faster away from the earth but what you may notice is that with the bigger engine um, it's going to be burning through this fuel a little bit quicker. So it'll be interesting to see whether it passes our 5, actually it's easily going to pass our 5,000 mark. Look at it! Uh, the threshold for orbit is 70,000 meters, so 70 km, and anything past that is sort of just bonus territory. So what you'll need to do in your groups is you'll need to, oh, in fact here, oh, hello. I've also put in a little separator so that um, in the last one our parachute didn't really support the full weight of our ship. Um, oh, and actually we're going to get some mid-air collisions going on here because <laughs> this is slowing down a little bit faster than the separator. Um, but yeah, what you're going to need to do in your groups is to um, do a scale drawing of the design of your ship. You're going to need to uh, budget it accordingly. You're going to tell me how much the total cost is um, and do some maths with regard to that. I'm going to build it. I'm going to send it up, see how far it gets. This one looks like it's doing pretty well. We're getting up to ooh, 30,000, halfway there almost. But then you can see we just didn't quite have enough to get us all the way. So the maximum is uh, 33,600 or so and then it's going to plug back down to Earth. So, the complexity of your designs can vary, that's going to be completely up to you, it's going to be up to you to manage your budget efficiently. Uh, so, for example, here is a bit more of a complex design, it's probably way of budget, you can see I've got different stages, I've got my cockpit at the top, I've got this long part here, a nice big one and then some small ones on the side. And what you'll notice is that this part down here on the right hand side, that's the stage where the order that things happen. So, uh, it goes from bottom to top, so they, these are firing first, these engines go first, then these things are going to fly off, then this is going to detach, and then this engine under here is going to fire. So, it's important that you tell me what order things go in as well, so that we don't get some ridiculous situation where, uh, you know, it activates the wrong part of your ship first, if that makes sense. So if I power this thing up, uh, just about lifts off, and if we just speed things up a bit. Oh, oh god. So, 
Also, you have to be a bit careful that your ship is stable. Uh, that, in that case, it wasn't doing very well, and now it's going to climb back down to earth and be a horrible disaster. Uh, they have the satisfaction of watching it crash. Oh, we can still activate. Oh, we can stage everything. Oh, no, in fact, <laughs> we'll see if I do, but our little parts will go flying everywhere. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, so that's the general idea, and, yeah, you guess you're in competition with the other people. Uh, your designs can be simple or complex. Oh, the last thing I'm going to show you is just about, um, yeah, about different symmetries you can have. So you can have things uh, like opposite each other in a line going two ways. You can have them in a three, like this top part here. You can have them in a four. You can also have them in a hexagonal arrangement, uh, like that, or an octagonal arrangement, so eight of them going like that. Um, and that's just going to be up to your personal preference, I think, about what you go for. So here, you can see I've also melded parts together. So I've got a, sm a big tank and a small tank, or like two, two of these tanks stuck together. Oh, the other thing is that um, you have to have a converter if you're going between two different radius sizes. And obviously some engines will fit on the big ones, but this small one, for example, it just doesn't work. Um, so, if I put that back together really quick, uh, and we launch it, you should be able to see this hopefully in action. So the, probably the two examples I've given you of the bigger ships are going to be way, way over budget um, for what you'll be working with, but it should be an example of how it can work. So here, oh yeah, the other thing is get the staging right. I would mention that once though. Um, yeah, and just let things go and make sure you get them in the right order because otherwise it just gets a bit messy and everything goes wrong. <laughs> um, so, uh, one final thing I was going to show you is that you might want to consider carefully um, the logistics and sensibility of your design. So if you pick the biggest tanks of fuel and just stack one on top of the other because you just think, oh, it feels great, you need lots of fuel to get into orbit, then you may be in the unfortunate case where uh, you get this problem here, I've got the engine turned on, you can see it's burning fuel up in this right hand corner here, uh, but there is simply not enough power to lift this much mass. So this little dude here, he is not strong enough to lift all three of these at the same time. Oh, what's going on? Let's try it. Oh, and yeah. So, that's the design challenge. Um, see what you can work with and see how good you are at getting yourselves into orbit. The sky's the limit after all, eh?